Andrew, I got an email yesterday from Ken Langone in New York University getting me ready for my booster shot coming up. Is the booster shot we're anticipating the same as the measles, mump, rubella booster shot or all the other booster shots of our childhood? The principle is really the same. It's to make sure that uh, your immunity is not only boosted, meaning that your immunity in the immediate time frame is higher and stronger than it was pre-boost, but there's a lot of data that suggests that that booster shot will also improve your memory responses, meaning that your immune system will improve the number of cells that are present that will then be able to respond to a future exposure to the virus and therefore make you even better protected against infection. So booster principles there are the same way. Uh, the benefit is going to be for immediate protection, but also for longer term protection. Can we uh, basically uh, come to the conclusion that the vaccines as they are now are not sufficient to block out the Delta variant when you see a place like Vermont with such a high vaccination rate uh, is seeing cases go up at such a dramatic pace? I think vaccines need to do two things. First and foremost, they need to protect against hospitalization, severe disease, death. And the vaccines in the U.S. are doing that even against the Delta variant. Um, we're seeing increases in the amount of breakthrough cases that are symptomatic in vaccinated people, but we have to put that in context. The vaccine is still providing great amounts of protection against infection, and this surge in cases is really being driven by unvaccinated people here in the U.S. Now, that's not to minimize the fact that Delta is a much more aggressive variant than any previous ones, and it's challenging our vaccines in a way that we really didn't uh, think was possible a few months ago. So Delta is stronger. It's making inroads into the vaccinated population, but the vaccines are still holding up. Okay. So we're talking a lot about vaccines and who can get vaccinated and the kids who are under the age of 12 cannot and we're about to go back to school. Uh, most kids across the United States at a time when we have this really infectious uh, variant that is spreading wildly. We also are hearing reports that kids are getting sicker with this variant. What's the latest on that? Yeah, and uh, the news is a, a little bit concerning. CDC also came out with uh, new numbers this week that suggested that the uh, infection rate in children um, and even adults under the age of 20 or so is really driving the, uh, uh, the number of cases in the U.S. right now. So we're seeing Delta variant penetrate into, into younger populations more effectively than previous variants, and we're seeing it cause a greater degree of disease meaning, you know, we always expected a certain number of cases of the severe disease in, the, in, in younger populations. That percentage seems to be increasing with Delta variant. So it does seem like this virus is more transmissible, mm -hmm. can cause more disease in younger populations. And, and, and Lisa, like you said, we're, we're gearing up to get back into schools at a time when vaccines are not available in a wide enough portion of that population to really provide that extra level of protection. So it's a concern going to the fall. What is the data? What is the science? What is the guidance on getting vaccines to those under 12, under 16, you name it? Well, those clinical trials are underway. Um, they were delayed a little bit because the FDA wanted the companies to add more children to the study to really get a handle on some of the adverse effects that um, were penetrating in older populations. So they really wanted to get a handle on the safety issue in the younger populations. There are also issues with dosing of virus and different dose of, of vaccine, I should say. Um, different doses are being given to those populations to to, to try to see what the best dose is. So there's a lot of science and clinical work that has to go into getting this right because, mm -hmm. again, these are our children. So we really want to make sure that, that the safety and the efficacy is even higher than what we did for the adult population. Does the full FDA approval that we got on Monday and the upcoming expectations of the next FDA approval of the next vaccine, does that change the game on the margin? I really do hope so. Uh, the data that led to the approval, the full approval of the Pfizer vaccine and the data that will lead to the full approval of the Moderna vaccine has been out there for months. We've seen it. It's, it's, it's fantastically good data in terms of safety and efficacy. And this full approval, I really hope, will drive 
not only more people to really sort of reconsider their decision not to be vaccinated and go forward with it, uh, but at the end of the day, it may also validate mandates for um, certain types of work, certain types of activities, uh, because we have the data. It's clear the vaccines are safe and are working. We need to use them more efficiently and more effectively to get this pandemic under control.